get your Stu Does America merch for Christmas. StuDoesMerch.com. We've got anyone but Biden uh, t-shirts and mugs and tumblers and all the rest. Also, Bidenomics strikes back, among so many others. We also have Santifa Claus. You're going to love Santifa Claus. Use the code Stu10 for 10% off at StuDoesMerch.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the bell for reminders. We appreciate it. Rob Eno is here to share the latest on San Francisco's miraculous cleanup. A Senate hearing almost legitimately breaks down into an open fist fight. I've got the details on that with uh, some video you're not going to believe. But we start by doing the March for Israel. Yes, it was today. And, you know, one of the things I've been hearing a little bit about is, hey, we keep seeing these giant pro-Palestinian rallies all across the country. And we've seen some of the signs, some of the things that have been said. Uh, suboptimal would be the way I would uh, describe that. Um, however, where are the big pro-Israel rallies? Why aren't we seeing those? Part of that is, of course, um, those people don't want to get murdered. Uh, but secondly, uh, th there really hasn't been a lot of those to point to, at least here in the United States. That changed today. Demonstrators from across the country marched for Israel in D.C. with ramped up security for an unprecedented event. Look at this crowd. I mean, this is uh, <laughs> it's a lot of freaking people there uh, saying the opposite of what we've been hearing in most of these protests. Uh, street signs as people take off uh, posters of uh, kidnapped children and, of course, from the uh, many in our government and in our media. Busloads of March for Israel supporters rally on D.C.'s National Mall to condemn rising anti-Semitism. You, you know, I, I keep coming back to this point in my head. Often I think we've progressed. I'm just going to use the progressive language here intentionally. We've progressed a little bit past some of these old hatreds. You would think some of this nonsense would be something that we could kind of skip. Can we just press fast forward on this? We really have to deal with this stuff again? And the, the answer cl quite clearly is I'm, I'm wrong on that. Like, I, we haven't progressed. We haven't uh, become people who can put these things behind us. I keep thinking to myself, well, you know, racism, that was an old problem, right? Like, haven't we gotten past that? Anti-Semitism, that's an old problem. Haven't we gotten past that? Sexism, that's an old problem. Haven't we gotten past that? And like, look, we've progressed in all of these areas, maybe with the exception of anti-Semitism recently. Um, but still, it doesn't make much sense that these types of things are still issues for human beings. You might say, OK, well, maybe in the third world, maybe in these really poor countries where they don't really have an opportunity to, you know, do anything other than hate their neighbors. I don't know. Maybe that's true. But here in the United States, really, we're really having this stuff still go on. I just I, I will never understand it. I really don't. Um, DHS has designated uh, the March for Israel in Washington a level one security event. Department of Portland Security has designated this March for Israel as a level one security event, the highest rating of risk assessment, according to um, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, he signed off on the designation earlier on Monday. For comparison, the Super Bowl is res routinely designated a level one event, um, which DHS says is, quote, defined as having such significant national and or international importance that it may require extensive federal uh, interagency security and incident management preparedness. As part of the designation, the FBI Department of Homeland Security has issued uh, a joint special threat assessment to other federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies ahead of Tuesday's event. Uh, the assessment, which ABC News has obtained a copy of, indicates no specific actionable threat to the March for Israel, but also echoes previous warnings from the DHS and the FBI, saying DHS and FBI assess that lone actors inspired by or reacting to ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict pose an unlikely threat to Americans, especially Jewish, Muslim, Arab communities in the United States. Now, look, they're, in reality, what they're talking about here is they're trying to protect the people in the protest, the people who are the protesters, the uh, and when I say protesters, the ralliers, the pro-Israel ralliers, those are the people that need to be protected in this particular instance. Uh, that's not to say that there are, of course, no incidents uh, of Islamophobia or attacks against Muslims, but we all understand what the tenor of the society is right now. We've seen these other protests where there have been attacks against almost exclusively uh, Jewish people in these, uh, or Jewish su Israeli supporters in these instances. We've talked about these statistics from um, New York City where the rise in Islamophobia and hate attacks towards Muslims, while seemingly at least anecdotally real, it had gone I think from one to eight in the entire city of New York City, 
Uh, so, I mean, like eight people in New York City, look, that's too many. I want it to be zero. I want it to be, don't want it to be one. I want it to be zero. Um, however, it only rose to the level of half of a normal month of anti-Semitic attacks. And that's before October 7th. Like the previous months, before that, before any of this even happened. Now, it's like eight or nine times as much happening to anti, uh, as far as anti-Semitic attacks. So, I mean, the, the, ta- the, the security designation is clear here. This is not for the people in the rally. This is not like a KKK rally where the KKK comes out and uh, everyone knows they might do some really bad things. So you have security stepped up. No, this is trying to protect the people who are in the rally. Uh, capital security, of course, also enhanced for pro-Israel march in D.C. And, and all that applies there as well. Now, all of this is going on while President Biden is going to talk a little bit to a bunch of world leaders about this event and so many other catastrophes he's currently overseeing. Biden preparing to discuss Israel and Ukraine uh, with President Xi and make the case for Beijing uh, to, to Beijing for containment. Members of the American and Chinese delegations plan to discuss both conflicts and their intensive multi-hour meetings in the San Francisco Bay Area, according to senior administration officials. And Biden and his national security advisors will seek to convince their Chinese counterparts it is in Beijing's interests to use its leverage with Russia and Iran to keep both wars contained. First of all, is there anyone who believes Joe Biden's going to stay up for a multi-hour meeting? Really? Multi-hour, like more than one? If you can get that guy awake for 15 minutes, I think it's a win. Multi-hour, I mean, unless they put a bed in the meeting room, I don't know how that's going to happen. But I will say it is, of course, in China's interest. If China would actually realize uh, or at least have the same desires uh, as the West, you could see a situation where, okay, well, this is going to help uh, us calm things down. A calm world means a better economy that's better for us. That's all true in theory. It's also not something that the Chinese government cares about. They, they, they don't care about any of this stuff. They, they're not going to listen to you, your Western reasoning here. This is not something that they're going to say, OK, well, look, I guess President Biden made a really good point in between, you know, the Z's coming out of his mouth as he was snoring. Uh, they're not going to be won over by this. They have different goals. They have different things they're trying to do. And that's kind of the big issue we're trying to deal with here. Right. The same thing applies to Russia. The same thing applies to Iran. They don't look at these things the same way we do. If if Russia looked at these wars the same way we do, you'd think that they wouldn't invade in the first place. Right. If you want calmness, you wouldn't encourage a country to uh, to to uh, go enter into these activities. But that's not what China wants. China likes chaos. They like it being mixed up. They want us to be weakened. What better way to weaken us than to get in a giant war with Russia? Right. So this is not a positive uh, development. And of course, Joe Biden has zero capacity to actually handle it. The Biden administration staff has now signed an open letter demanding a ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war. Hundreds of federal employees signed this. Of course, they did it anonymously. So I don't know how much you want to take from that. But it is fascinating to see the real energy of the left is not where Joe Biden is. Joe Biden like Joe Biden came into office with this promise of moderation, right? He's going to be the normal guy. You had this crazy Trump character, and now you're going to have a normal president again. He's going to be in the middle. He's not a crazy leftist. Sure, he leans left a little bit. He's a Democrat. But generally speaking, he's going to be right in the middle, and he's going to take this place of normalcy. Well, we all know how that has completely failed, right? Yes, there's also layers of incompetence. Yes, there's also ideological problems. But really, he has not tried to be in the middle on almost any issue. This is a, a slight exception to that rule. He's doing old school, normal leftism when it comes to Israel. He is occasionally backing them uh, with his words, his actions, not quite as much. There's been these weird sort of half warnings. Hey, make sure you do this as, uh, uh, you know, as, eas- as quickly and easily as possible. Well, you know what? I think that's what Israel wants, too. They don't want to go in there and get bogged down into a long-term war. Nobody wants that. It's, it's stupid to remind them. They don't need reminding of this. That's not how this works. But, you know, when it comes to Biden, you know, look, he's just as far left as many of these uh, crazy AOC types in the party on almost all issues. This issue is a slight uh, d- exception to that rule. He- he's not quite as bad as AOC or Ilan Omar or Rashida Tlaib on this stuff. Him, Chuck Schumer, you know, even Hillary Clinton. I mean, li- Hillary Clinton has even come out with public comments that have been supportive of Israel. Now, look, what, is he 
is she going to do the same stuff that I would do? No. She's not uh, the same stuff that you would do? No. She's not good. I don't want to like, give the impression that she's good on this issue. She's not, but she's so much better than the AOCs of the world and the Rashida Tlaibs of the world, certainly, that you can understand that this is a, an issue that's causing consternation within the party because what they do is they hire a bunch of 25-year-old aides that all feel just like AOC. They all feel just like Rashida Tlaib. They all feel just like Ilan Omar. And that's fine for the Biden administration on almost every issue because Biden is that way too. He gives the tone of a moderate candidate, but in reality, he's not that way. He's spending... I mean, these programs he's proposing are as far left as any candidate who has ever run. If you remember going back to his platform when they were running, when he was running for president, he would come out and sound calm. He was, he was an old guy. He can't be that harmful, right? He's harmless. He's an old codger. Eh, look at his actual platform. His platform was more to the left than any candidate in the history of this country. And it wasn't even close. And it wasn't even close to Barack Obama's stated agenda. Now, look, I think Obama's just as far left as Joe Biden is, but Biden was the one who really acted on it. Obama, while he got a lot of stuff done and a lot of stuff that I believe harmed the country, he actually, he would, he would slow himself down from time to time. And remember, he had 60 Senate votes for a while. It really is remarkable. Now, there is an internal State Department memo that is blasting Biden and U.S. policy on the Israel-Hamas war. You know, it's funny. I Now I'm hearing the media suddenly adopt the phrase deep state, which is really fascinating to watch. I mean, they sat here and made fun of Republicans for making these arguments when Trump was president. But now that Biden is president and these things are trickling out from staff members and, um, you know, cabinet members and different uh, State Department officials, the deep state's all of a sudden real. Now it's real. Now it counts because it's going against Joe Biden, what Joe Biden wants to do. That's the way we look at these things, apparently. Uh, former Biden and uh, Obama officials give support, a boo uh, give President a boost over his Israel support amid party divide. He is getting some of the uh, former Obama types that are coming out and supporting him. Hillary Clinton is sort of one of them. She obviously was Secretary of the State under Obama, among uh, several other attempts at getting jobs. Um, but uh, her statements aside, really, like, you don't see too much public support for Biden on this. He's kind of hung out to dry and left for Republicans, I guess, to come along and make these types of points. Uh, there was an incredible Washington Post story. Hamas envisioned deeper attacks aiming to provoke an Israel war. In quiet support of Gaza's economic development, Israel agreed to grant work permits to up to 20,000 Gazan laborers. Think, listen to this. This is, this is so consistent with what Hamas has done throughout this period. They have taken good faith efforts by Israel to try to elevate uh, g the Gazan citizens and have used them against Israel over and over and over again. 20,000 Gazan laborers were hired. Meanwhile, it allowed Qatar to deliver $30 million of monthly development funds, first in the form of enormous suitcases brimming with cash. I mean, what kind of weird world do we live in? Uh, then through Gazan retail stores, um, the former head of Israel's defense intelligence and uh, the president of Mind Israel, a consultant group for Israeli politicians and security agencies, said the group Hamas elicited additional information, int intelligence officers said, from Gazan day laborers who were permitted to enter Israel for work, often in the same farming communities that were in Hamas's crosshairs. So Israel, out of compassion, allows 20,000 laborers to come in from Gaza and then Hamas uses them as spies. How do they get all this good intelligence about what was on the other side of that wall? They were using the day laborers that Israel allowed to come into the country to show goodwill to the Gazan citizens. This is the repeating pattern over and over again. There's more. Well, we have to pay a price. This is from Hamas. Um, yes, and we're ready to pay that price, said a member of the Hamas Politburo, and that told to uh, Beirut's LCBI TV station that aired on October 24th. We are called a nation of martyrs, and we are proud to sacrifice martyrs. Hamas was willing to accept such sacrifices as the, as the price for kickstarting a new wave of violent Palestinian resistance in the region and scuttling efforts at normalizing relations between Israel and Arab states, according to current and former intelligence officials and counterterrorism experts. Got this? Like, they didn't think they were going to go in and, like, overrun the country and take over Israel. That was not the goal of this. The goal was to inflame tensions, to try to block good things from 
happening with other Arab nations who were getting closer and closer to this. And, you know, they basically counted on the useful idiots that you're hearing echo Hamas propaganda today. Counted on it. They intentionally went in there, did these things as brutally and awfully as possible. So they knew Israel would get upset. They knew Israel would have to change the dynamic here. And then they went with their propaganda to the media and their allies to try to prop up this argument that Israel was committing some sort of genocide. They knew that Israel would would come to them. They knew Israel would hit them hard. And not only did they know about it, they counted on it. And of course, the only way that works is by this message being echoed over and over and over again by the mainstream media, by our U.S. politicians, and by global leaders. They knew that would happen. And they knew that, I mean, think about this. They knew that their efforts to rape, decapitate, murder, stream the murdering of grandparents to their family's Facebook page for all of them to watch, they knew that was going to end up in a win for them. What does that tell you about journalism in the world, in our media? What does it tell you about the global leaders who came out here and continually uh, propagate this nonsense? I mean, it really is revealing. There's more from the Washington Post. They were very clear. They were very clear-eyed as to what would happen to Gaza the day after, said a senior Israeli military official with access to sensitive intelligence including interrogations with Hamas fighters and intercepted communications. They wanted to buy their place in history, a place in the history of jihad, at the expense of the lives of many people in Gaza. Hamas knew Israel would strike back hard. That was the point, Katz said. To Hamas, Palestinian suffering is a critical component in bringing about the instability and global outrage it seeks to exploit. I mean, there's a version of this that makes you feel bad for the Palestinians. Um, not Hamas, but the Palestinians themselves, outside of the Hamas supporters, of which there's an uncomfortable amount. But beyond that, these people are being used by everybody. They're being used by Hamas. They're being used by other Middle Eastern countries. They're being used by seemingly everybody. The only people who ever seem to do anything even mildly nice for them is Israel, and they hate their guts. I don't know how you explain that. I mean, it's just old hatreds, I guess, coming back to the fray. Even if its current leadership is effectively destroyed, she said, Hamas and his, its followers will continue to regard October 7th as a victory. That's partly because the group unquestionably succeeded in focusing the world's attention on the Palestinian conflict. It's the first time I can remember that Hamas has become so prominent on a global scale. So many people have already forgotten October 7th because Hamas immediately changed the discussion. It put the focus on Israel, not themselves, and that's exactly what they wanted. That is exactly what they wanted. But the question remains, why are we giving it to them? Yeah, we understand that's what they want, but why would we provide it to them on a silver platter like the media is doing right now? It's okay to, of course, cover the, the, the incidents fairly that go on in this area. Um, but, I mean, you know, we have major media institutions that are outwardly hiring people who love Hitler to cover a Jewish conflict. Does that seem fair? Does it? We have people in the, in the, uh, in the uh, Congress of the United States who are outwardly echoing genocidal statements about the region, who are outwardly echoing propaganda from Hamas. Over and over and over again. Are they forced to back down? Nope. Nothing. Nothing really even happens. It's, it's, it's one of these things where you get in a cycle. It's hard to, to find a way out. It's hard to find anyone who's brave enough to actually speak out. So, I mean, as much as I've been critical, obviously, over the years, and Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton, I think it is important to at least draw a distinction between them and the more insane parts of the Democratic Party on this particular issue. Look, AOC is really, really wrong. They're just kind of wrong or pretty much wrong. Um, but still, it, it doesn't excuse so many who, who are supposed to bring us the truth. You, know, you can't depend on the Gaza Health Ministry to give you accurate information. You can't take propaganda from Hamas and run it as news, even if you throw in the phrase Hamas says or Hamas run Gaza Health Ministry. None of that matters. You have to do your own homework. You're supposed to be a journalist here. You need to go into these areas. And if the people you're talking about are so fine and dandy, you don't have to worry. You got your press badge right on the front. Everything will be fine, right? Or are you worried that they will take you hostage too? 
Because that seems to be the actual worry here. And instead of saying, wait a minute, these people are so dangerous that we won't even go into their city to see what the hell is going on, maybe you should question what they're telling you about this conflict. Because what they're telling you over and over and over again are proven lies. And if you wanted to catch them, you could. The problem is the media doesn't seem to want to. Thanksgiving is one week away, which means the best GenuCell sale of the year. And that's just in time for the holidays. The GenuCell most popular package is back for you to look stunning for your Thanksgiving gatherings. And with the brand new GenuCell 3, also included in your most popular package, we're talking about 10, 15, 20 years off your uh, appearance. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And this is the best natural skincare you're going to find. You can take advantage of the GenuCell best sale of the year and... Say goodbye to fine lines, crow's feet, uh, bags and puffiness, the laugh lines, the dark spots. The Jenny Cell experience is like no other, but don't take my word for it. Just check it out for yourself because you can get your money back if you don't think it's the absolute best thing you've ever found. Uh, no questions asked. They're not going to pressure you on this. Uh, you're going to love this stuff, though. JennyCell.com slash two. I will say, holidays are coming up. They've got this incredible holiday discount, better than 70% off. GenuCell's most popular package with GenuCell 3 and the Dark Spot Corrector. This is a fantastic gift. If you have no freaking idea what to get the loved one in your life, get them this. Results in 12 hours or less. The immediate effects is included as well. Free. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew. Genu GenuCell.com slash stew. Right now, you get a free upgrade to priority shipping at checkout. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. It's GenuCell.com slash stew. I'm joined now by Blaze TV media critic Rob Eno, uh, along with special guest in, in your pocket. Figured it was good for the segment today. Yes. You know, I need to show my my Z pride. Yes. Because he loves the Winnie the Pooh. He do, does he? He absolutely loves the Winnie the Pooh. Well, how do we know this? Um, well, I think he's banned him in the country. Mm -hmm. He loves him so much that he wants to keep him all to himself <laughs> and doesn't let the people have so him. So if I can't have him, you can't have him. Basically one of those types Right, of I think that's it. And I've always wanted to go, when I go to Disney World, you know, every once in a while, I've always wanted to wear like just a big Winnie the Pooh shirt and then just hang out in the Chinese pavilion all day. Yeah, just to see what so happens. Just to see, since most of them are from China, that's how the whole exchange program works. It would be very interesting. It would be To see how long it takes me to get you know, kicked out for wearing Disney merchandise. Um, normally, you have to go over to China to really come, you know, deal with President Xi, but he's here. He's got to be here at least, right? He's here for I don't know how long in San Francisco, making a big appearance along with a bunch of other world leaders to talk about God knows what and probably screw up the world. Um, it's been a fascinating thing to watch this happen because San Francisco in particular, where this is going on, has decided when President Xi comes to town, it's okay to actually clean up the town. All the homeless people get to be moved. They clean up the streets. Mm -hmm. The power washing goes on. It really is incredible what they're doing, and I can't even imagine how residents are, are taking this. I mean, you got to clean up for the boss, right? Yeah. If, if the boss is coming to inspect the country that he owns, mm -hmm. you got to kind of clean up for the boss. <laughs> yeah. um, when you know when his underlings, Joe Biden, comes, you know, from the Biden crime family, you got to make sure that everything looks fantastic. But it is insane, right? I mean, that that city has been an absolute hellhole for the past five, six years. Um, walking on the street, there's feces everywhere. You can't go into a store to buy anything without having to like ask them to go get it in the back. Matt, Matt Peterson, our editor in chief, was talking about a story. He was in LA County, but he was down in, in Southern California. And to get tin foil, aluminum foil, they had to go to the back of the CVS because the aluminum foil was getting stolen so much. A high value item. High there. value uh, item, the aluminum yeah. foil. I mean, that, that's what is California now. But, you know, I guess, you know, it takes, it takes a big man coming to town to make sure that you clean up because who cares about the little people that live there every single day? It's really fascinating. And I go back to, I, I think it was Super Bowl 50 was in San Francisco. I was in town for that. And it wasn't cleaned up at all. Like, they, right. you have all the biggest executives, CEOs, really important people, also people like me, uh, in town. And it, I remember walking down the street and smelling literally the worst smell I've ever smelled in my entire life uh, it, that weekend. It was Homelessness was everywhere. It, you, there were times you were just scared to walk around. If it got dark, you wanted to get the hell off the streets. I mean, it was scary back then. It's gotten much, much worse. Why would they clean it up for the Super Bowl if they were capable of doing it? 
You'd think at the very least, if this was a really event-based cleanup, they would do it for that too, but no. I think it's because the NFL doesn't own the country. Mm. Like China does with all of the, it's like the whole what was Cinco de Mayo was like it was the 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 French coming to collect their debt to Mexico. This is kind of you know this is the guy that owns the bonds that owns mm-hmm. a good vast majority of the country. He's buying up all the farmland, yeah. uh, growing you know he's got his triads growing marijuana in uh, Maine. Don't know if you've seen mm-hmm. that story, but mm-hmm. apparently there's you know big marijuana grow illegal marijuana grow farms owned by the Chinese in Maine now. Um, So, you know, he's just coming to inspect their stuff and you want it to look spiffy when the boss comes. I think that that is mainly (laughs) the real thing. And I I love Newsom being like, oh, no, we've been cleaning this up all the time. And when was that Super Bowl? That, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Okay. Uh, let's see, probably, probably seven years ago. Okay. Like yeah, because I, I went in t- 2010 and it wasn't that bad. Okay. It was nice in 2010. It was not nice when I went. Yeah, that, that's just, it's absolutely insane. You brought up Gavin Newsom. Let's, let's, let's bring this in because, he, of course, we're not the first people to notice this. Like, if you're a resident of this area, you're getting knifed every other Thursday uh, as you walk to, to work. And all of a sudden, you wake up one day and all the homeless people are gone. All the streets are cleaned up. Everything looks perfect. Why wouldn't you just do this for the residents? Uh, the residents kind of brought this point up, and Gavin Newsom had to answer for it. Let's listen to his first answer. I know folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Mm-hmm. Um, that's true. Oh. Because it's true. Oh. But it's also true for months and months and months prior to APEC, we've been having different conversations. You see, Rob, it's true because it's true. Exactly, and they've been having different conversations. What, what does that have to Call them. Uh, they can Zoom you if you want to have a conversation with them. Save the flights and clean up the city. Right, I, I think, what are the different conversations? Like, yeah, it's dirty. <laughs> like, they, they don't even clean up for the Pride Parade yeah. in the that's Castro right. District. Yeah. You would think that, you know, they would clean up. That, that's just anti-LGBTQ. That is. You are not cleaning up for the Pride Parade, but you're cleaning up for, you know, the Communist Party, which has been known to line gay people up against walls and shoot them. Mm. So, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is remarkable, though, that he's admitting this, right? Like, this is, he's not saying this is, oh, we had this plan for a long time. He's not even trying to find a way out of it. He's just admitting the only reason we were doing this is to please communist dictators that are visiting. Then he's kind of pressed on this, and he needs to follow up is he going to back down? Is he going to double down? Here's Gavin Newsom. Anytime you put on an event, by definition, you know, you, you have people over your house. Right. You're going to clean up the house. You have 21 oh. world leaders. You've got tens of thousands of people coming from all uh, around the globe. Uh, what an opportunity to showcase the world's most extraordinary place, okay. San Francisco. But you're not showcasing San Francisco. You're, sh- you're showcasing some amusement park that gets cleaned every night. Right. You're not showcasing San Francisco. San Francisco has all of those warts as part of it. So uh, what are they actually trying to show people? I, 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 I don't know. I, I think he's, <laughs> they're trying to like maybe fake it for the world press that's coming in. Yeah. That, San Francisco's a clean place, come and But when you're visit. talking about it, you can't fake it, right? I mean, right. You've, you've told everyone you're doing it for this purpose. It's like, you know, Kim Jong-un, when you go visit and you go down all these clean streets, he just acts like that's real. He doesn't tell everyone he's falsely cleaning it up. And then this idea that you, yes, of course we all straighten up the house when we're going to have guests over. That makes sense. Mm. But we also straighten it up as we go to, I don't know, because the people who are residents of the house also right. deserve more of your attention than visitors? I mean, I, I, this argument makes no sense It's, it's like living in an apartment complex, right? And mm-hmm. it's like dirty all the time, but the investors are coming around. Yeah. So it like gets spiffed up and like you know that like, oh, we're getting sold, right? Like I'm going to have a new landlord in a month. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those are the sorts of things that it, that it seems like. And it's just, if it wasn't so hilarious, I'd be upset. But it's just, it's... It's absolutely insane. It reminds me of, and, and this is a, a G thing, it reminds me of the 2008 Olympics, right? Mm-hmm. When they had the 2008 Olympics, you couldn't breathe in China because of all the rampant pollution to make our, you know, Winnie the Poohs and, yeah. and things like that. And for like the month before, they're like, oh, we're just not going to manufacture anything. It was like a pre-trial run for COVID. Right? <laughs> yeah. We're not going to manufacture anything. And you see these pictures of Beijing and like instead of the brownish hue to the sky that's there all the time. It was clean and blue and beautiful um, for the Olympics. Amazing. And then um, it went away. Let me address one other side issue on this because I think this is underplayed. Gavin Newsom sucks. 
Like he is, p- people look at him as this like, well, if they could just get him in there instead of Joe Biden, uh, that would be better if you're a Democrat. You got to acknowledge he's not good at this. I mean, this, these are terrible statements. He's done a terrible job handling this. He routinely does a terrible job all the time. He's awful during COVID. I mean, what is the qualification other than the fact that he obviously really wants the job? Other than that, what is the reason that you'd go to Gavin Newsom? I don't even understand it. It looks a little bit like... Uh Matthew McConaughey, maybe, right. maybe that, maybe that's it. You know, it's he's a, a good-looking guy. Good looking guy. D- you, know, you know, he was the original husband of you know Kimberly Guilfoyle. So maybe there's there's that. <laughs> maybe I don't. You know, I don't. Know I don't that's know. a qualification. It's, yeah, I mean, I, 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 he started in American Psycho. I, that's uh, yeah. I, apparently maybe that's enough for him. Um, it's a bizarre thing. All right, let me go to another big city leader here, uh, Eric Adams, who is I came from a law enforcement background. Obviously, he's going to be tip top law and order guy. Uh, and now all of a sudden he's in all sorts of legal trouble. His 25-year-old lead fundraiser, which is an, uh, is an interesting statement to, to make, uh, apparently did something wrong. Now he's, his phone is being taken away. Uh, this all in seems public. a little, yeah, this all seems a little coincidental, doesn't it? Yeah, you, you know, in September or August, he started being upset with all of the illegal immigrants that are in his city and started Mm. voicing his displeasure publicly about the lack of enforcement by the Biden administration. And all of a sudden the FBI is investigating him (laughs) for something he did before he was even elected. They're saying that he put undue influence on the fire department to open up the Turkish consulate, right? I mean, elected officials put influence on their employees to do things all the time. All the time. It's, it's like governing in the United States. Right. Every city's a little, this is like routine everyday corruption, if it is, that New York City mayors have been doing since there have been New York City mayors, right? Sure. So actually, probably when they were the New Amsterdam mayor um, or Burgess or whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, when, when the Dutch owned Manhattan. It, it's just, it's insane to me. And it's so blatant that this is what they're doing. I mean, who gets at an event the FBI to show up and just take their phone? And this like, is they, publicly, like, like they wanted to like publicly show that right. they were doing it. And this is after he's the one that alerted the officials. Like Adams went to the officials and said, hey, there's something going on here. You might want to look into it. And they came and took his phone. Now, if he was trying to hide what was on his phone, he could have deleted it before he got in touch with them very easily. But instead, they came and make this big show about it. And it does seem to be tied to criticism. I mean, it just the only we don't have anything concrete on that, but it just all appearances are this is revenge. It absolutely. It, it, there's no way that it isn't. They did it to, to Quaylar here in Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Representative Quaylar, when he was running in the primary last year in 2022, all of a sudden there was maybe an investigation and they did some stuff. And his crime again was being the tall poppy coming up above the, you know, the rose of corn, sticking his head out mm. and saying, you know, this immigration stuff is crazy because he saw in 2020 that in his district, people started going for Donald Trump, even the Hispanics, because of the way that the border was being handled. And it got worse. And this is just them trying to scare other Democrats to keep them in line, keep them on the plantation and not go out. It's the weaponization of the Justice Department. And they don't care if they use it against Republican critics and they don't care if they use it against Democratic critics. It's 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 we are becoming a banana republic. We are becoming I don't want to say a dictatorship, but this is what they do in those sorts of places. And this is exactly what this is in my mind. Well, I mean, if they start getting to the point where they try to put, uh, you know, his political opponent in prison, then I might be with you. But so far. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. This is already happening. Robbie, no, a Blaze TV media critic. What a freaking weird world this is, Rob. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the program, man. I really Perfect. appreciate it. So if you love American manufactured products sourced from American materials, then you're going to love Grip6. It's a small company in Utah that sells in the United States, but really all over the world. But they're like the reverse of all the companies you know, where they produce everything all across the world and try to sell it to you. They make it here in America and sell it to you, but also to places all across the world because their products are in high demand. Whether it's wallets, belts, or socks, you're going to get the best quality at an amazing price, and you'll be supporting a company that puts America first, 
while you're doing it. Uh, I love these products. I have a bunch of, uh, the socks are fantastic. The wallets are great. Uh, you're gonna love the belts as well. Uh, if you're going to uh, get one of these items, you gotta go to Grip6, because you're not only gonna get the highest quality, but you're also gonna be helping America. They're running a family and friends sale right now. It's an exclusive sale for subscribers. If that's you, go to grip6.com slash stew, grip6.com slash stew. You'll see 30 to 40% off the entire site. This is American manufacturing at its very best, and you don't wanna miss out on it. Buy the best products you can get is important and making sure they're made in America is even more important. So go to GRIP6. You'll support GRIP6. You'll help American manufacturing. You'll help American jobs. GRIP6.com slash stew. Save 30 to 40% off the entire site right now. It's GRIP6.com slash stew. Get 30 to 40% off site-wide at GRIP6.com slash stew. So a bizarre incident in the Senate today during a hearing um, between Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, he's a senator from Oklahoma, and Sean O'Brien, who uh, is from the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Now, these guys have a bit of a history where I guess uh, the Teamster guy was like, oh, you know, qu quit the tough guy act in the Senate. Uh, you know, uh, you know where to find me. Come find me whenever you want. We'll, we'll settle this like men, that type of tweet. And Senator Mullen, who you should know, you'll, and when you watch the video, you'll know who would win in a battle between these two guys, like right off the bat. But you should also know that Mullen was a former MMA fighter. He was a former wrestler. He was undefeated in, in his MMA career in, I think, five uh, bouts. So this guy is not like a normal guy that you can get into a fight with and maybe luck out. This is a guy who's going to kick your ass. Like, it's going to be ugly. Um, so with all that, all that being said... They were face to face in the same room because Mullen initially responded to this and said, hey, let's do it. We'll do an MMA type fight. We'll do it for charity. No real uh, acceptance of that from the Teamster guy. Well, they got face to face today and here's what happened. It's like he's self-made. Sir, I wish you was in the truck with me when I was building my plumbing company myself and my wife was running the office because I sure remember working pretty hard and long hours. Pretends like he's self-made. What a clown. Fraud. Always has been. Always will be. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me. Any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. <laughs> if you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold, stop it. Is that your Sorry. solution? Every poll. Oh, no, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Actively. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Shim. it. Hold it. If hold we can't, no, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this is a hearing. Yeah, I'm a United States senator. Uh, you know, it's funny. He's the one that gets yelled at for that exchange where that guy. Seems to want to be the toughest guy in the room. Let's see, let's see him throw hands. I mean, why not? Look, it, it would get something done for, for one time in our government. Nothing ever comes of the stuff that they do except screw our country up more. At the very end, what's the worst case that's going to happen? There's going to be some Teamsters teeth on the, on the floor. And that's, you know, look, it's not the best day the guy's ever had. But, you know, I'm sure he'll stop before actually uh, ending his life. So maybe they can meet up afterward. I think they should meet up. I, when people like that talk like that, they deserve a slap down. They really do. And um, it would be interesting to see it happen. My guess is it probably won't. Uh, the senator will, uh, you know, come up with some uh, way to uh, avoid murdering his, <laughs> his political opponent. But at the end of the day, when someone thinks they're that tough and they'll keep going with it, that ends one way every single time, and it's, it's not particularly good if you happen to be the union representative. Let me tell you about Liver Health Formula. They've already helped more than 2.6 million people with their products, and it's not surprising that it's you know, quite popular. I, well, 
people want their liver to be healthy, so why wouldn't you? Um, but of course, if you add up all the residents of Arizona, Virginia, Florida, and Texas, you still would not get to the 100 million Americans that have sluggish, fatty livers that make people gain weight, uh, experience fatigue, all sorts of bad side effects. If you are suffering from low energy, brain fog, unexplained extra flab, I mean, all, my, my flab's all explained. Uh, very clearly explained from directly from the Taco Bell nutrition menu, but some people can't explain it. Uh, you should try liver health formula either way because it's an all natural supplement that is packed with clinically proven botanicals that help you recharge and protect your liver. Has thousands of positive reviews on Amazon. You know it's time tested. Uh, only on the Blaze right now, you have the best offer you can get on the whole internet. It's a, basically when you order one, you get a free bottle of blood sugar formula, you're getting a 64% discount. Head over to my dedicated page at getliverhelp.com slash stew, getliverhelp.com slash stew. Remember, we can't save America if we don't look after ourselves. So getliverhelp.com slash stew. It's liver health formula. As you know, the government is quite efficient. And when there was a, some cocaine that was found at the White House a year ago, we knew we would get to the bottom of that story. Then a week later, they basically said, eh, we're not going to look anymore. We don't know who it was. Uh, we are finally getting pictures of the cocaine. Here is the locker set uh, where, we, uh, where the cocaine was found. Uh, it was locker number 50. And inside locker number 50, a teeny weeny bag of cocaine. Oopsie doopsie. Uh, left my cocaine in the uh, locker. Now, I, I've been thinking, you know, maybe this was Hunter Biden because he seems to do cocaine all the time. But to be fair, that's not even like a lunch worth of cocaine for Hunter Biden. I, like that wouldn't get him through, you know, uh, a 20 minute jog. So I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Hunter. Uh, I will say that they are trying so hard to hold on to the power that they have in the White House. And they're just trotting out experts to say anything like this, for example, the revenge of the blue collar worker. Bidenomics is working too well. Yes, that's the problem. Democrats bourgeois base is souring on it. They don't like it because it's working too well. That is really what they're saying today. Of course, Americans kind of see through it. They believe a new poll is out uh, that high inflation is the new normal. And like this is only echoes, you know, I don't know, a century or so of conservative commentary. The bottom line is when you spend like this for this long period of time, it's going to bite you, bite you. Now, it's not just the Democrats who have done this. Of course, conservatives or Republicans, at least, have done this for a very, very long time, including Donald Trump, who did not seem to care about uh, spending whatsoever when he was in office. Uh, of course, Joe Biden's made it worse. And this is what happens. We have bad people on the right who get into office and do all sorts of bad things when it comes to spending. And then you have worse, way worse people on the left that come in and make things much, much worse. It's a thing. I don't know. A pattern we should try to reverse. It's just an idea. Maybe we should try to do anything else than what we've been doing lately. But this is our country and this is where we stand. The blaze is getting bigger and bigger. So many more things are coming your way. Uh, one of the latest is The Blind. It's the true story of the Robertson family. Of course, they're uh, part of the Blaze TV family. And it's now available for purchase on Blaze TV. This is the, the movie uh, about the Robertsons. It takes you on a great, incredible journey through the life of Phil Robertson. Now, The Blind isn't made by The Blaze. It was a big major motion picture release that you might remember from a few months ago. Um, we don't have, we don't own it. So we, we can't include it as part of your Blaze TV Plus subscription, but we can sell it to you. And you might say, well, okay, well, thank you. I can get that at Amazon. Would you rather give the money to Amazon and Apple? Or would you rather give it to, I don't know, people who actually like conservative values? The Blind, it's $19.99 at blazetv.com slash the blind.